Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back if you're returning. I want to preface today's video by saying I am not a true crime expert. I am simply a true crime fan. Take everything said as a speculation, allegation, or opinion unless it has been proven otherwise in the court of law. I don't want to get sued. Today we're talking more about the Micah Miller case because it's bothering me how much things are still not making sense. As many new details that keep coming forward about this case, it's still not adding up to me. Some of our questions have been answered, so that's what we're going to be covering in today's video. It's on June 24th, 2024. A medical examiner and toxicology report was released detailing Micah's cause of death. I quickly want to mention another creator, Gavin Fish. I really enjoyed his thorough coverage about this medical report, so I will link that below if you want to check it out yourself. Now what we're going to take a look at today is from the North Carolina Medical Examiner. But remember that this is not an autopsy. Micah never had an autopsy done. Why wasn't there an autopsy performed? Sometimes when the matter of death seems obvious, an autopsy isn't always ordered. The coroner or pathologist would be the one to order an autopsy. So in Micah's case, I guess they just did not feel the need for one. A past theory we discussed talked about JP possibly overdosing Micah on her lithium medication. But when this toxicology report was released showing that Micah had both no alcohol or rugs in her system, that theory was debunked. The medical examiner also documented that there were no signs of struggle at the scene. This doesn't necessarily mean there wasn't a struggle, but it does mean that there probably wasn't scuffling. Things like broken branches or shuffled around leaves are a few examples of what they would be looking for. We did uncover a few more details about exactly where Micah's body was found, because when the park ranger was showing the investigator, hey, Micah's body was found over there in the water, I thought to myself, if she hadn't alive to herself in the water, how would she be found? Wouldn't she sink or would she like float away? Reports claim that she was prone submerged near some tree limbs, only about a hundred feet away from the shell casings that were found. It was also previously speculated that the wound entered from the back of Micah's head, but after the report was released, it was determined that the wound entered from the side of the head above the ear in a star-shaped entrance wound. There was a muzzle imprint, there was soot left, there was even some blood left in her ear canal, telling investigators that her ear was bleeding. Two skull fractures were also found, one in the front and one in the back of her head, but that could have been caused not to be morbid, but if the blast comes in from this way, debris can fly and cause fractures on other parts of the skull. When she was discovered, rigor mortis had not set in yet, but liver mortis had. Simply, liver mortis means the settling of the blood, so it travels to the lowest point of the body because of gravity. So if you're sitting down, it would travel to your butt and to your feet. If you're lying down, it would travel to your back or to your stomach. Whichever way you're positioned, the blood will travel to the lowest point. So that was the state that Micah was found in, as well as the blood settling. So once it reaches that lowest point and sits there for a while, even if you move the body, the blood will not move again. I know, I know, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to be like, you yeah, know, like PG-13 with these details, but this is life, people. This is reality. It's scary and the more you know. She was pink in color and cool, not cold to the touch. So this was all lining up with her being unalive for a couple of hours at this point. She had two black eyes and she had bruises on her hands and people were wondering, well, where did the bruises come from? Investigators report that it's consistent from when her body was pulled from the water that surrounding branches could have caused the wounds on her hands. On her, Micah was wearing a necklace thought to be given to her by JP, I believe. Leave. She had a ring with a clear stone, which is probably her wedding ring. She had a bracelet, a watch, and she had on the beard the bird earrings as well that she was seen wearing when she first left her house earlier that day. Which someone else has also commented, but like why would you even bother accessorizing that day? I don't know. I just something to think about. She also had her ID and some cash on her, which we talked about before, and 
I still think it's so odd that she's carrying that much cash on her, especially where she is when her body is found, because when investigators found the car that she was using at the state park, she left the gun case in the car along with some ammunition, so it wasn't like she wouldn't leave stuff behind in the car. So why did she bring her ID? Why did she bring her cash on her? Was it just like, was it just on her person and she just didn't bother taking it out. Dr. Johnson, who's a medical examiner, who also serves as a regional pathologist for the North Carolina office. He wasn't on call that particular weekend Micah's body was found, but he did assist the on-call medical examiner at the scene. Micah's sister, Sierra Francis, filed an affidavit basically asking to become the executor of her state so that she could represent Micah's best interest in the pending divorce between her sister and J.P. Miller. And on May 2nd, the magistrate straight granted her request. In the affidavit itself, Sierra details how Micah felt about J.P. Miller, how Micah felt like he had control over her, was tracking her, and if something ever happened to Micah, that J.P. did it. Although with all these details, with the report being released and the detail about the entrance wound and how Micah's body was found, does look consistent with Micah unaliving herself on April 27th. The investigation remains ongoing, and if you remember in previous videos, talking about the shells found at the scene, Micah's own father said that she wouldn't just fire a test round to test out the gun. She knew how to use the weapon. Plus, I think if you fire it off more than once, you're going to alert people around you. That's the last thing that you want to do if you're trying to get a little bit of privacy to commit commit such an act. I also thought that maybe Micah had used cash at the pawn shop and the 500 or so left on her was just left over after purchasing the weapon. Maybe didn't want her transactions tracked, but that was also debunked when I found out she used a debit card to purchase the weapon. So my only other real theory about why she might have that cash is maybe she was making a payment to her lawyer. Maybe the lawyer is the only transaction that she might not want JP to see happening because even at the pawn shop it might just say like pawn shop and she could just say she bought whatever. I don't know. That's my own opinion. Let me know what you think down below. I will keep you updated as more details come forward, but I really hope that soon enough we can find out what actually happened to Micah and put this case to rest. So I will see you guys in my next one.